Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Lutheran Church. It's great to have you here with us on this beautiful morning uh, that God has given us. Uh, beautiful weather. Let's just enjoy this for all we can. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us in your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. One thing I forgot to mention at the start of the service is that we're having communion at the end of the service today. And so if hopefully you saw on your way in the communion elements, if you didn't pick those up, make sure you head back during the service to grab some of those for later in the worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O Lord Christ, good shepherd of the sheep, you seek the lost and guide us into your fold. Feed us and we shall be satisfied. Heal us and we shall be whole. Make us one with you, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. 
The next day, the rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were of the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who is sick and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is no salvation, there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. All right, if, if any of my young friends are here with me for the children's sermon, maybe you can give a honk of the horn or a big wave. All right. Good. Glad to know that you're here. So I have something in my hand. Maybe not everyone can see it. Aiden, can you see what it is? Yeah, it's a sheep. Okay. So what would you call a sheep that has no legs? A cloud. <laughs> Sorry. Just needed to share that. <laughs> All right. So today, today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday. And this happens every year uh, during the season of Easter. That what we do is we read the lesson where Jesus describes himself as the Good Shepherd. Now, have any of you ever met a shepherd in your in your life? I know I haven't, but they they still exist. Shepherds still exist, just not so much around here. But shepherds, what they do is they take care of the flock. They make sure the flock gets to where it needs to go to eat the green grass, but also make sure that they get some water. But also, the shepherd protects the sheep because there are predators out there, you know, coyotes, wolves, whatnot, that would, uh, would you know, come in and, and do their best to, to make at least one of those sheep its next meal. And so what the shepherd's job is, is to protect the sheep. And what Jesus says is that he is the good shepherd for all of us. For all of us, he's the good shepherd. And, and what he means by that is that he wants us to be one, like a flock, but also that he cares for us, he knows us by name, and he, he uh, has the best uh, wishes for us. He wants us to, to thrive, to, uh, to know that God loves us. And so we'll hear more about that in the, as we read the gospel lesson, but I hope that you remember that, that sometimes you'll see pictures of Jesus, maybe with, with like a shepherd's crook or carrying a lamb. And what that's supposed to do is remind us of this promise that even though we don't have wool on us like a sheep does, even though he doesn't actually have a shepherd's crook, what Jesus is saying when he says, I am the good shepherd, is that he loves us dearly and will pay any price to make sure that we are one together and with God. All right, will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus. He tells us he is the good shepherd. And we love all of his care, all of his protection, and his promise to be with us always. Help us to remember this and to live into this. Amen. All right, thank you very much. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. 
just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. O Christ. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A video made its rounds on the internet this past week that is completely fitting for today, Good Shepherd Sunday. In this video, there is a straight dirt road and then sitting along the side of this road is a long pipe that will be connected to others and used for a water supply network. Then next to that pipe is a long trench by an, that was dug by an unseen machine. That trench will be used for burying this pipe. And so the trench is extremely deep, but very narrow. We see something white sticking up out of the trench and a young child is working to pull up on it. The child struggles for some time, but eventually makes some headway. And the viewer realizes that this child is pulling on the hind leg of a sheep just as it emerges successfully from the trench. It's a heartwarming scene. And the viewer is proud of this child, likely a shepherd boy, who has successfully dislodged this sheep. And let me tell you, that sheep is overjoyed, to say the least. Upon being freed, it begins excitedly running around through the grass that's next to that trench. When it decides to leap over that narrow trench to reach the other side, only to misjudge the leap and lodge itself headfirst once again into that same trench. <laughs> And seeing this, the shepherd boy simply throws up his hands in exasperation. <laughs> There's an old question asked by farmers. Why did God create sheep? The answer is to make chickens look smart. Sheep need a shepherd to lead them to still waters, to protect the sheep from predators, and to get the sheep out of the trouble that they make for themselves. When the church celebrates Good Shepherd Sunday each year, it uses the metaphor of shepherd and sheep to make claims about Jesus, but also to make claims about us. Good Shepherd Sunday claims that we still need protection, care, and guidance. It also inherently claims that we can make foolish decisions, and perhaps not even realize it. Like sheep, we long for security in our lives. We long to trust that someone else is caring for us. We long not to be burdened by constant worries. When we look back on our time during this pandemic, most of us experienced, at least for a time, the emotions of thinking through various worst case scenarios that could play out with ourselves or our loved ones. Imagine now constantly feeling that way. It would be dreadful. Constant anxiety about every potential danger is not a good thing for our mental health. To function in a better way, we need to trust that some things are taken care of. That includes basic needs like food, shelter, and water, but also our security. 
Those basic needs are common for us and for sheep, but there are obvious differences in our needs too. For instance, we don't need a literal shepherd to make sure that our needs of water, food, and security are met. Humans have created societies that, at their best, operate to make such things available to the people. So people don't need any old shepherd, and Jesus doesn't claim to be any old shepherd. He claims to be the good shepherd. Then he explains what that means. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Hired hands would run away from attacking wolves, allowing the sheep to be attacked and divided. The good shepherd, however, would rather lay down his life than to allow the sheep to be slaughtered and scattered. We've seen statues and pictures of G Jesus in a flawless garment, either holding a lamb in his arms or perched on his shoulders. That's nice, but that's not the picture that Jesus is describing here in this lesson. He is saying the good shepherd willingly allows the wolves to devour him so that the sheep won't be devoured. I've never seen any forms of art that depict that scenario. Clearly, he is distinguishing how this good shepherd is unlike anyone else. Jesus says the good shepherd knows his sheep and they know him. There are other videos that you can find online of sheep and their shepherds. Of course, some of those videos are humorous, but the most interesting one I've seen is of shepherds who truly know their flock. The shepherds in these videos are able to distinguish the different bleats of the sheep and then name which sheep made that noise. And likewise, when you, re when you compare the responses, sheep usually don't respond very well to the work of a guest shepherd when compared to their response to their own trusted shepherd. Okay, so sheep and shepherds know one another. But what Jesus says is that the good shepherd knows his sheep just as he and the Father know one another. Try to picture the promise of that. First of all, so much of this world treats us as just another cog in the machine, or another number. Yet God doesn't do that. A clear example of this is how our minds struggle to comprehend 570,000 deaths in the United States from COVID-19. Those people have names. They had lives. They had passions, hopes, beauty, and they also had loved ones. It is difficult for us to grasp such a tremendous loss. Yet Jesus knows them, and he knows us all. Lives that bear the image of God will always be valued by the Good Shepherd. That value valuing is more than just an appreciation, though. The Good Shepherd knows the sheep as deep as the Father and the Son's knowledge of one another. Suffice it to say that if we theologically ponder and discuss that level of intimate knowledge, we'd always be only scratching at the surface. What Jesus is getting at is that he, as the Good Shepherd, knows us and cares for us more than we could ever imagine. And here is the part that bewilders me. That abiding care and steadfast love doesn't lessen when we foolishly jump headfirst back into the very trench that he just rescued us from. To be honest, 
There might be a moment of exasperation, but the Good Shepherd won't delay in rescuing us again and again and again. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Psalm 103. That leads us to the third point Jesus makes about the Good Shepherd. Who is the us in his flock, or this fold, as he puts it? Is it limited to just those worshiping on this day? It is, is it a certain Christian tradition? Is his fold set around some, some kind of definition of Christianity? How far does this flock extend? He says in verse 16, I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. So somewhere there is an undefined fold, and outside of it are others whom Jesus welcomes and for whom Jesus extends his role as the good shepherd. There's a lot of unknowns in there. And maybe that's how it's supposed to be. Maybe you and I are supposed to picture that anywhere that we might define the boundary around those people who are acceptable to Jesus, and then they're outside of it are the unacceptables, there is always the possibility that Christ is on the other side of that line that we have drawn. Since there is a lot left unanswered in this first verse 16, perhaps we are supposed to leave it unresolved. There is a lot of peace that, that can be found in saying, I don't know. And we can simply trust that Jesus has it figured out. Since Jesus has it under control, we are left to go and do what Jesus commanded us to do. Love God and love our neighbor. We don't have to worry about who is in and who is out. Jesus is fully capable of defining whatever constitutes his flock. And it is one less thing for us to be worried about in this life. Like sheep, we simply trust that the Good Shepherd will love and care for us. Unlike sheep, however, we are able to do more. You and I can tell others about the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and who has the power to take it up again. You and I can care for one another and our neighbors, embodying the love that the Good Shepherd shows to us. We can trust that the Shepherd cares and knows us. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Thanks be to God. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe, I believe in, God, in God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. earth. I, believe I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended, he ascended to heaven. heaven. He, he is seated, seated at the right hand, hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. Gracious, gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to wholeness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need, especially for Sally, Sally. Irma, Irma, Grace, Grace, Bill, Bill, Aloha, Aloha, Doug, Doug, Marie, Marie, Stephen, Stephen, Phil, Phil, Sally, Sally. Bob, Bob, Lillian, Lillian, Janice, Janice, Lynn, Lynn, Chuck, Chuck, Carolyn, Carolyn, Claire, Claire, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, David, David, Ralph, Ralph, and those we name before you now.
Help us love one another in truth and action. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Eternal Shepherd, you hold us securely in your loving hands. In the assurance of resurrection hope, we remember our loved ones who have died in you. Especially, Mark the Evangelist. Bring us with them to dwell in your house forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share a sign of God's peace with one another. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the, generous, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Thanks be to God. body of Christ given for you, Amen. and the blood of Christ shed for you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness in our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Well, for the announcements today, uh, a few things are coming up. Uh, first of all, uh, look at your parish notes because there's a lot of things coming up, but I'm not going to mention them all. But this Tuesday, we're hosting a Red Cross blood drive again, and so the best way to register for that is to go to uh, the Red Cross website and you can search by zip code and uh, find our blood drive and register for one of the times available for that. Uh, we, because of the weather yesterday, we canceled the men's kite outing, and so, but we're bumping it to today. And so what we're gonna do is meet today at five o'clock at the Coastal Retreat Center on Isle of Palms. Um, all you have to do is just bring a kite and we're just gonna hike on over to the beach and just have some fun uh, with that. So five o'clock today, meeting at the Coastal Retreat Center. Um, so uh, y'all are welcome for that. Uh, and finally, the newcomer gathering will begin, uh, we'll, we'll start having those sessions next week. And so if that's something that is of interest to you uh, in learning more about the, the work that we do here at All Saints, um, you're welcome to come to that. By coming, you're not uh, saying that you're definitely becoming a member here. It's just an opportunity uh, to learn more about the ministry we do. Uh, it's a beautiful morning, so let's uh, take the time to uh, stretch our legs and wave to one another. The way we do that is we start with people on the driver's side of their vehicle. Uh, if you're comfortable with it, go ahead and step out and give a wave to your fellow worshipers here at All Saints. Great to see so many here. <laughs> All right, and as they are getting back into their cars, those who are uh, on the passenger side of their vehicle, if, if you're willing and able to step out to give us a wave, that'd be great. Let us now receive our sending blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Lord Jesus, the God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Sitting here in limbo And I know it won't be long Sitting here in limbo And I feel like a bird Ain't got no song 